This is the Kenakal, also referred to as the Upper Room. It has been a synagogue, a church, and a mosque, as Mount Zion in Jerusalem has been under the rule of the Byzantines, the Muslims, the Crusaders, and the Turks, to name a few. Under the arched roof of the church, the Turks built a mihrab to indicate the direction of Mecca. This is a painting of the same site done 20 years ago. Like the site itself, the painting was stolen and later retrieved. Like the provenance of a painting, an architectural site has a provenance too. This is a triptych of another site on Mount Zion, the Tomb of David. Both of these sites are traditional and their historical accuracy is not certain. I began noticing and taking pictures of old buildings and their remnants around Israel after I was released from my basic training in the Israeli army in 1990 at age 40. These are three black and white photographs from that time. We have maintained a home in Ashkelon for 27 years. Many of the structures are in ruins, and some no longer exist. For example, this abandoned Ottoman administration building, which for many years has become the abode of bats. This is the little mosque in Ashkelon, built of local sandstone by the Mamluks in the 14th century. The Mamluks were of Mongol and Turkish origin, captured as slaves, converted to Islam, and used as soldiers. They gained power and established dynasties that lasted from India to Iraq for a thousand years. And this is the Arabic dedication and signature of the builder of the little mosque. This larger mosque is part of a complex called the Khan. It was also built in the 14th century. And these two paintings are of the ceiling of the Khan. And before we leave Ashkelon, here is another Mamluk structure on the cliff overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. It is called Kever HaShech, the Tomb of the Sheik. It has three chambers, one containing a mihrab, one containing the tomb itself, and one open with a courtyard. The name of the Sheik inscribed on the tomb in Arabic is Awad. Now I will hand the microphone over to my wife, Yona. So in these particular images that are coming about now, I want you to especially appreciate what it was to work not only with the color wheel as a whole, but also the phenomenon of complementary colors. And that's an interesting term in itself, because complementary means that something is very different from the other element. So we have opposites. And how can they get along? And this seems to be one of the things when we have observed in this land is how can we get along with all of the peoples that have come before us or that are here? So in the colors that I used, it usually starts with either green and red or purple and yellow or orange and blue on my palette. And when you mix the two complements, you get very interesting shades of gray, warm grays or cool grays. And you can see in the compositions, if you study them, which complement, if not all of the complements, I employed. This is from a section of Jerusalem called Mamila. It is on the border of the old city and the new city. When I lived in Jerusalem in 1988, it was dark and abandoned, the walls pocked with bullet holes from the War of 1948. Today it contains an upscale shopping mall where Arabs and Jews mix every day. These interiors are from the oldest section, from the Byzantine era. These are oil lamps from the storage closet of a Greek Orthodox church in the old city of Jerusalem. 
the entrance of the Ethiopian section of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Retired ornaments from atop the Dome of the Rock from previous centuries that are housed in the Dome of the Rock Museum. Interior from the Jewish quarter of the old city of Jerusalem, or a Chaim Street, where Yonah once lived. One of the other very important ingredients to coming to this work was, first of all, getting inspired with Chaim when we were together around the country. And I love to do that because Heim's eyes and my eyes together get excited about things almost simultaneously. So when I come back to the studio, when I take his photographs that have been printed on a paper or a canvas, I can go back to the time when we first saw something and think about the feelings I had when we were observing the objects that I was dealing with. And many of these objects are beautiful, beautiful buildings. Some of them are deteriorating with age, of course. But the first thing I have to think about doing besides working with color is what kind of paints and approach am I going to do on those chosen images? And the first thing that I think about is do I feel like it is something that I want to work like watercolor? Or do I want to work it like oil? And maybe I want to do kind of collage work? Or do I want to use a lot of mediums and maybe some panda or um, uh, pastels? Sometimes in combination. All of these problems that the image presents, I have to solve by what choices I make. What is particularly interesting to me is that as we view these images, they have been being um, worked on for the last 26, 27 years. We have done this project together and I see how it has grown and one image kind of snowballs into the next one, into the next one, into the next year and into the next decade. And I like to see the process just as much as I'm engaged in the process of executing each one of these paintings, I see that the overall picture of what we've been doing for the last 26 years makes me very happy, content, fulfilled, and excited.